Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our midweek Lenten service. We're glad you could join us. My name is Rich Verva. I'm a member here of Trinity. I'm filling in for Pastor Amy, who is on vacation this week uh, with her family. I think they went to Florida. Um, a few notes about our service. The, the, everything will be projected on the walls, but if you'd like large print slides, we can make those available to you. Just raise your hand and uh, an usher will get that to you. And if you would like to connect with a pastor, uh, feel free to fill out the slip on the back of the pew rack uh, and hand that in on your way out. So now let us worship the Lord. We'll begin with the gathering prayer. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Amen. We look, but do not see. Lord, open our eyes. We stumble at noon as in the twilight. Lord, open our eyes. God turns our darkness into light. Lord, open our eyes. We are not forsaken. Look up and see. Lord, open our eyes. Our opening hymn is number 793, Be Thou My Vision. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Join with me in praying the prayer of the day. Open our eyes, Lord, to perceive your desire for the world. Remove those things that block our vision and widen our gaze to encompass all you would have us see. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our first reading tonight comes from Isaiah chapter 42. Thus says God, the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. 
I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Acts chapter 26. All the Jews know my way of life from my youth, a life spent from the beginning among my own people and in Jerusalem. They have known for a long time, if they are willing to testify, that I have belonged to the strictest sect of our religion and lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand here on trial on account of my hope in the promise made by God to our ancestors, a promise that our 12 tribes hoped to, att hope to attain as they earnestly worship day and night. It is for this hope, Your Excellency, that I am accused by Jews. Why is it thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? Indeed, I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things against the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And this is what I did in Jerusalem, with authority received from the chief priests. I not only locked up many of the saints in prison, but I also cast my vote against them when they were being condemned to death. By punishing them often in all the synagogues, I tried to force them to blaspheme. And since I was so furiously enraged at them, I pursued them even to foreign cities. <clears throat> with this in mind, I was traveling to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. When at midday along the road, Your Excellency, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and my companions. When we had all fall into the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It hurts you to kick against the goads. I asked, Who are you, Lord? The Lord answered, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you to serve and testify to the things in which you have seen me and to those in which I will appear to you. I will rescue you from your people and from the Gentiles, to whom I am sending you to open their eyes so that they may return from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You get to hear a bit from me tonight. Tonight's reflection will utilize poetry and art to open our eyes to see God more clearly. Here's a poem. I need a front door for my hall. The replacement I bought was too tall, so I hacked it and chopped it and carefully lopped it, and now the dumb thing is too small. Well, limericks are a type of poetry, but that's not what I mean. I'm talking about a different type of poetry, a poetry that is centered on God. Gotcha. Jesus died upon the cross to prove to Satan who is boss. Uh, sure, that's a Christian message, all right, but there are many different types of poetic forms. For example, not all poems have to rhyme. <laughs> not rhyme, they should rhyme all the time. Actually, many of the most famous poets never used rhymes in their poems. Now I fear you're being obtuse. That's not what I learned from dear Dr. Seuss. Oh, did you know that a great deal of the Bible is considered poetry? The Psalms, for example, are poetry. Most of the Hebrew prophets were masterful poets, and the majority of God's speech in the Bible is represented as poetry. I did not know that. I will tuck that knowledge under my hat. I'd like you to help me read a poem by Joy Lenton called Seeing Clearly. We have combined the words with images to help us understand the message, but you have to promise me one thing. What's that? You have to be serious when we're reading this poem. Am I clear? Yes, dear. <sighs> Seeing clearly. <clears throat> Life 
can so easily throw us off balance. All it can take is a word, a look, a thought, a new problem. Seeking the truth of the matter can be challenging. Our senses are alert, heightened by sensitivity. How do we decipher truth from lies, fact from fiction, knowing and believing from ignorance and misunderstanding? When I keep my eyes focused on my circumstances, the pain can feel overwhelming. I feel lost, alone, muddled and confused. When I lift them to God's word, seek his presence, and listen to all he desires to impart to me, my eyes cease being clouded by suspicion, discouragement, or fear, and my vision becomes clear again. My heart beats steady. My thoughts begin to align more with his thoughts. I am encouraged and strengthened to face another day, another problem, another set of unwelcome circumstances. Taking off my worldly lenses and putting on spiritual ones helps keep my mind and heart tuned into his truth. And the more I read, understand, pray, and believe God's word, the more he fills me with a peace that transcends all circumstances. I just realized something. Many of the hymns we sing in church every week are really poems in disguise. And by the way, they usually rhyme. Here's an example. Holy Spirit, truth divine, dawn upon this soul of mine. Breath of God and inward light, wake my spirit, clear my sight. And here's an example of a poem from the Psalms. Your lamp is a light to my feet and a light to my path. During this season of Lent, we will be prayerfully exploring ways in which we can be more fully open to God's presence in our lives. We are not called to do this alone, but with the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the illuminating word of God. God desires us to be like the Apostle Paul, whose eyes were opened by God for God's purposes. Paul's life became focused on God. Paul spent the rest of his life proclaiming God's love for all people. May we be open to God's presence in our lives. We'll continue our Lenten reflection by singing Michael W. Smith's song, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord.
Please join with me in our prayer. Lord of all life, when we cannot see the beauty of your creation, open our eyes that all living things thrive and grow. When we neglect the poor, the sick, and the grieving, open our hands to do your work in the world. When we ignore the cries of injustice in our midst, open our ears that all will know your love. When we are hardened against our neighbor, open our hearts and heal our resentment. When we are closed to the grace you long to give us, open our lives and turn us to follow in the way of the cross. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Let us pray. God, God of, of mercy and grace, the eyes, the eyes of all wait upon, upon you, you, and you open your hand in blessing. blessing. Fill, Fill us with, with good, good things that we, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Sing with us, please. And the angels cry, Holy, all creation cries, Holy, you are lifted high, Holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing, Holy, to the King of Kings. Holy, you will always be Holy, holy forever Your name is the highest Your name is the greatest Your name stands above them all All thrones and dominions All power and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cries holy you are lifted high holy holy forever hear your people
may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Giver, Giver of, every of every gift, Christ's, Christ's body, body is for us, us and we are Christ's, Christ's body. body. Raise, Raise us to life by your power, power for, the for the benefit of all. Goodness, goodness overflowing in the, in the manner, manner of your glory, glory now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements. As I mentioned, Pastor Amy is on vacation with her family uh, until next Wednesday. If you do need uh, to talk to a pastor, Pastor Madeline will be available. Uh, we're having, I believe, our very first Facebook Live prayer gathering on Monday at 6.30 p.m. So if you haven't already, make sure you join uh, the Trinity Fort Facebook group so, you, group so you can get notified of that. And we'll be continuing our mission statement workshops after Sunday worship on March 3rd and the 7th. So receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Our sending song is Christ Be Our Light, number 715.